Steve Mignani here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with the mighty Oldsmobile 442. This is a 1967 convertible and of the total 24,829 442s built in 1967, just 3,080 or like one in nine was a convertible. Now this is a real one and we've got to remember of course uh, 1967 was the fourth year for the 442 which in 1964 when it came out meant a four barrel carburetor, a four speed manual transmission and two exhaust pipes. Well by 67 it meant many things, 400 cubic inches but you could get a three speed manual, a four speed manual or a three speed automatic which is what we have here. But before we get into that check this hood out. 1967 was the one year for this steel louvered hood. Now these are actual louvers, it's not an applique, it's not a plastic insert. Oldsmobile actually stamped louvers into the hood. But the other side of the coin is that like most muscle car hoods of the mid 60s, it doesn't do anything. In fact, there's a welded on panel below that that makes sure water never gets into the engine bay or air. But with that said, it was a styling touch <clears throat> seen only on the 442. Very rare hood. Okay, let's take a peek underneath and see what we find. <clears throat> and there it is, the 400 Oldsmobile uh, seen for the third year, 65, 6, and 7. Now 67 will have a Rochester Quadrajet carburetor. And there it is. It's nice that this car is so pure that the original spread bore Rochester is still in place. Now it's mounted on a stealthy aluminum Edelbrock intake manifold. And I won't tell anybody if you don't, but this is aluminum, it's lighter, has larger passages than the cast iron GM piece. So don't tell anybody, that's another 20 horsepower right there. But beyond that, it's largely stock. The manifolds are still in place. It does have a Mallory high energy pointless ignition, good stuff. Got the Mallory amplifier in place and the coil pack. And something that's really nice to see, the power booster with front disc brakes. 1967, right here, first year for available disc brakes on the front of the 442. Previous to this, there were strictly nine and a half inch drums, which were great as long as you didn't do any aggressive driving. But these disc brakes on this will pretty much handle any kind of normal driving situation. Uh, so beautiful to see there. Some styling, some show touches happening. You know, the chrome plated uh, alternator, nothing wrong with that. That's cool. Power steering, good to see there. And uh, again, 400 cubic inches, plenty of horsepower and torque. Let's move along down the side. This does have the super stock type wheels. These are all chrome made by, uh, I believe it was Motor Wheel for um, Oldsmobile. Nice to see BF Goodrich modern radial TA tires, which kind of hide in plain sight. You gotta love those 442, uh, three colors, red, sort of uh, orange and a yellow, just really, just good stuff. Just the subtleties of branding that were just really carried to the extreme by Oldsmobile. Inside, bucket seats. And the center console has that shifter. This is a turbo 400 car, which is to say, first year for the three-speed all-aluminum GM turbo 400 automatic, which is a great transmission. 1966, the automatic would have been the two-speed Jetaway, which was an evolution of the Pontiac Super Turbine. But again, with two forward speeds, the 66 and 65 442s were, were hampered. But by 67, this car right here, that three-speed automatic is nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing wrong with that. Good tranny. They used them in SS396s, Corvettes. Good tranny. Now, at the back of this one, we've got to love the blacked-out Cove, the 442 treatment. And of course the logo, same as the front and the sides. And again, in the mid 60s, you know, the external badging on muscle cars were street cred and they were what you bragged about. And 442 owners were kind of in the minority because Oldsmobile pitched the 442 as it was as much of an acceleration car as it was a handling car. And every 442 will have a rear anti-roll bar. We can see it hanging below the axle and that is, uh, it connects the left and right lower control arms and coil springs so that when the car encounters a corner, body lean is resisted by the twisting of that bar. So all 442s have that rear anti-roll bar, whereas in GM, or oh, the GTO, the, the SS396, and uh, even the, the Pontiacs uh, would not have that as standard equipment. But 442 was more about handling uh, than the other GM muscle cars. So that was a major plus if you were uh, a 442 owner then or now. Inside the trunk, yeah, that's nice. The Zola Tone finish. This looks like it could well be the original trunk floor. 
I don't see any signs of uh, patches or rivets or anything like that. So this is a really nicely presented deck uh, trunk floor on this. And keep in mind, as a convertible, this one rides on a special frame. It has boxed side rails and extra body mounts. So um, the handling on this thing is going to be a little stiffer than a, than a coupe. So a great, great example of a 66 442 convertible. Now, this car is available with financing from High Octane Classics with as little as 10% down, and High Octane Classics will deliver cars to your employer, your work, your school, whatever you like, and they do take trades. You name it, they'll consider it. And keep in mind, for 12 years, High Octane Classics has been in business, and they're looking to buy more cars, 5, 50, 10, whatever it might be, they'll consider your trade or your sale. And if you want to join the team, well, High Octane Classics is looking for sales and service professionals. So give them a call at 508-859-4515. And to learn more about the 67 442 convertible, check it out on the High Octane Classics website.